Uh, as of September 22nd, uh, 2011, uh, the total amount of funds committed were 14.8 million US dollars. Uh, there is a <coughs> the amount actually disbursed by the Caribbean Development Bank was approximately four million dollars. So there is an undisbursed balance of about 11.8 million. What um, we have. We have pretty much committed the resources, which means that we have decided on the projects which we are going to allocate the resources to. Uh, the issue now is to get the money out. Uh, there are a number of, of constraints in that regard. One of the constraints has to do with capacity, but uh, the objective is to move the funds as rapidly as we can. We won't be able to get the results that the Minister speaks out until uh, the fund actually reach the designated recipient. So that's part of the challenge that we have. Certainly consider it, but what we want to see are the results coming out of this initial investment. Um, we, we have, as, as, as President Smith said, committed most of the money, but in fact some of the projects are in very early stages. And we want to make sure that what we finance so far is working. If we get that reassurance and we see the results, then we will certainly look at uh, boosting the fund. I think the other point that's made at the main table is that the, the European Union has funds available which will be used in a very similar mechanism to this, this fund we're publicizing today. So that, that will be additional resources available in the region for this kind of activity. But we, we will keep it under review, but we, we will look to see results before we make any decision on this. If, if I could just give some idea of uh, <coughs> benefits also going to the OECS countries. Uh, the OECS countries have benefited from 14 projects to the tune of about 4.4 million US dollars. So I think there is a fairly good distribution across the, the region of, uh, of these resources. A situation which was already less than optimal in terms of the institutional capacities in that country. Um, and the project seeks to be with the capacity to deal with people implementation, to deal with the full integration into the on single market and economy, and to deal with other um, institutional and um, implementation with the trade agreements. Let me give you an example of, of, of how capacity is so needed in this. Uh, let's take the example of the fact that the some countries um, awarded received, let's say, a waiver in duty of goods from Haiti going into Canada countries. Uh, Haiti would have been required, for example, let's say, to meet the origin criteria and to the origin certification for those goods to be able to be after. But if the country did not have that kind of capacity, it would not have been able to take advantage of the concessions made to it and the opportunity created for it within the context of the state Projects of that nature would build that kind of capacity in Haiti to take advantage of opportunities of the state and to fulfill commitments and obligations made within the context of the state Access to defending territories is absolutely crucial, which is why, for instance, we are looking very, very hard at, uh, we hope, building an airport in St. Helena. Uh, if you have isolated communities, they will find it much more difficult to prosper. And in the department, we have a duty of care, a legal duty of care, uh, for these uh, areas, which is why we have many programs to support them. We hope not in perpetuity, if we can make them prosper. And uh, that's why we are prepared to invest in some infrastructure in some cases to see if they can in future stand more on their own two feet.